joining us. Um, so we've had a, a quick overview of Google, um, and now we're going to do kind of a footprinting example, show you guys how sets work, um, explain some of the transforms. There's some really cool ones that I just want to go over. Um, so I think we'll take it from where we left off in the client. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start a new graph. Uh, I'm going to use Control T, otherwise I can click on that icon, same as when I started. Control T, now I've got a new graph, uh, and I can start playing with stuff. So I've decided we're going to do this one on Sony, uh, and I've been in the news. One, uh, a cool way, instead of double clicking on an entity and getting the pop-up, if you have a really simple entity like a domain, you can just double click on the text uh, to change that. So I'm going to use Sony.com, I'm going to right click, and you're going to see there's a whole bunch of different transforms available. So obviously if you're doing a footprinting uh, exercise on a domain, you're going to start with all the DNS kind of stuff. You're going to look up MX, NS, look for shared infrastructure, a whole bunch of things. Um, and one of the cool ones, that, one of the cool transforms that we do have is one near the bottom here, uh, two website DNS using search engine. So basically what that does, I'm going to show you in a browser, is you do something like this. You say uh, sites sony.com and then I can start looking at all the things that Google has indexed. So there's www.spe.sony.com, station.sony.com and then I can do things like I can say okay minus www so I don't want those um, and then I'll get you know different Sony websites that have been indexed by Google and I can use these then as DNS names and then I can take these to IPs. So there's a really nice way because I'm not touching the infrastructure so I'm not trying to do like a brute force or anything else um, but I'm still able to get a whole bunch of DNS names. So we're just going to do that within the, within the client. So I'm going, to, I'm going to select the domain that I've put in, right click on it, all transforms and I'm going to say uh, to website DNS using search engine. Okay, I'm just going to select that. My slider is still on 255. So now it's going to communicate with our server and pull down the results. And then we'll, we'll have a look at it, see what it looks like. So there you can see it doing it within the, within the browser. Um, so obviously here I've got EQ2 players that's dot station. So I can say, okay, well, minus EQ2 players. And I can get more, and I can keep going this way uh, until I've indexed a whole bunch of them. So here you can see in the in the client, there's a whole lot of them uh, that have come up. It's actually returned 56 entities. You can see in the output window, it kind of shows you how many results you got back. Uh, so I can have a look at these, some interesting ones. Uh, if I select them all, I can also look in the detail view. So that's this view on the right side of the screen. I can just make that a bit bigger. And now I can have a look at, at kind of what I've got without having to view them in the graph. So it's a nice way to, to look at that. I can just select one, double click and it's going to zoom, put it in the center. So there it is. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is, of course you can individually run each transform that you want, uh, but within the tool itself, we've also created what's known as sets. So sets are like groups of transforms that you'll commonly run together, um, so that you won't have to click on each one and run each one. Instead, you can run an entire set. So one of the default ones is DNS from domain. So this is going to do, okay, looking up the MX, NS, uh, attempt to zone transfer, look for common DNS names. So those are things like www, mail, uh, IMAP, things like that. To website DNS using a search engine. So that's the same as I just showed you in Google, uh, doing site and the domain, then starting to filter out. Um, and to website quick lookup, which just basically does the thing that we did in the last example where it'll just look for www.thedomain. So here I'm going to run all in the set. Okay, so I right click run transforms, DNS from domain, and then all in the set. Okay, my slide is still on 255 because that's the amount of results I'm kind of looking at. Okay, and here I see them start coming out. Uh, FTP, blog, secure, there's obviously my common. Um, and here in the output window, you can see it start running the running the transforms and how many results you've got back from each one. It's important to look in the output window in case there are any messages, something like uh, if you're doing reverse DNS at uh, server sniff or um, you know, something else might be down or there might be you know, a, a timeout somewhere that you'll have to look at. Okay, so here you see you've got a whole bunch of different types of entities that have been returned. And remember, transforms are specific to an entity. So here, uh, for this specific one is an NS an NS record, so I can run these, whereas this is a website, uh, so I have more transforms available. 
Okay, so now I've got all the DNS entries. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to use a set again, resolve to IP address. Now you'll see that there's a whole bunch of the same name. Um, this is because these are specific transforms for saying NS and MX websites, um, you know, all the DNS ones. So I'm just going to run all in this set. And now I'm going to switch to dynamic mode just because it looks nicer and it's nicer for when transforms coming out. And now you can see all the IP addresses coming out. Uh, you can see in the legend at the bottom right, all the IP addresses are now coming out. So now I've kind of done a quick DNS overview of the domain. I've uh, resolved them all to IP address. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take them to a net block. Obviously, once I've got a net block, I've got kind of an idea where the infrastructure sits and I can start playing with it. Um, so there, they're finished. I'm going to switch back to uh, mining view. And you'll see here, okay, there's a whole bunch that come into this IP address, two into there. These are both one-to-one -one mappings. And obviously, if I switch to edge-weighted mode again, uh, now I can I can get kind of okay. Well, this one is really important. There's you know there's more links to it, and this one as well. And as they get smaller, these will be sort of one-to-one -one mappings, uh, and this one will have four or five. I can also look in the detail view to see what the incoming things are. So I can see one bit of information is linked to this. Um, so this return to arms is linked to this IP address that I'm interested in. Okay, so switch back to mining view. Now I've got all my IP addresses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now take these to net blocks. So obviously that's a little bit of a, a difficult transform. Um, and you'll notice that in all transforms, you'll see this one here using natural boundaries. Uh, so this one will divide it into net block uh, with a size that you specify. So one of the things is by default, it's set to, I think, 256. Um, but if you click on the little configuration icon, uh, you'll see it there on the right next to the blue icon. If I click on that, it brings up a wizard here that uh, shows me what the transform inputs are. So this is something where I give additional information to the transform before it's run. So you'll see on this one, it's block size is 256. And you can just check this to be a pop-up. By default, it's not. So I've said to be a pop-up. So what that means is that when I run the transform, it's actually going to pop up and say, hey, what do you want this value to be, uh, if not the default? So now I'm just going to go to all transforms and I'm going to say using natural boundaries as the one we've just modified. And now when I click on it, it says, okay, how big do you want the block size to be? Uh, in this case, I do actually want them to be 256. So I'm interested in the class C's that they have. So now I run this. I'm going to switch back to dynamic mode. And now you can see that the net blocks are yellow. You can see them start coming out um, as it's kind of figuring out all the all the different net blocks for that. I'm also going to switch to edge weighted view just so you can see okay, the different weights of things. So this one's got a couple, that one's got more obviously because it's bigger and more central to the graph. And there you'll see that they're uh, completed. So I'll switch back to mining view. This is generally the view that I work in when I'm running uh, transforms or when I'm trying to look at my graph. So here you can see, okay, there's a whole bunch of different net blocks. Um, so now I can take it further with these, of course. Um, I could take the net blocks to, say, reverse DNS. Uh, I could look them up to different countries and figure out the locations at the end. Um, and I can keep going with this and, you know, do a really nice footprint of the organization.